Here we go. You are now listening to Random Rambling with Rock. Yay! Yeah! Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. What up, everybody? This is your boy, B-Rob, and I'm back with another edition of the Random Rounds with Rob podcast. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you, the listener, for coming back each and every week or however you listen to podcasts. If you're a first-time listener, I'd like to thank you all so much for giving my show a try. And if anybody recommended you to me, go ahead and reach over and give that person a crisp high five. But if you want to be socially cautious and you don't want to worry about germs and COVID and whatever else, that may ail you, um, pick up your social media app of choice and send them a well-crafted DM telling them thank you for recommending you to me. And speaking of social media, you can find the Random Ramblings with Rob on various social media platforms to include Twitter, at 3R Show, Instagram, at The 3R Show, and I, if you've been listening to a little show called the RBR Weekly Wrestling Talk, they just inducted me as the ironically enough, the third member of their Fatal Four. So I am a host on the RBR Weekly Wrestling Talk. If you want to hear me talk about wrestling and other shenanigans, you can hear me over that way too. And for anything that I may have forgotten to mention, you can go to randomrob.com and find all that stuff to include the sponsor, Hooks, Rubs, and Spices. You can get 15% off your order if you use promo code RANDOM on hooksrub.com. Get some spice in your life, baby. Put some of that shit on all your food and make it delicious. Now, I done uh, used my Ace Ventura-like breathing techniques to belt out all that intro. <laughs> I have a guest, if you hadn't seen already, if you're watching this visually. But we was just talking just a couple moments ago about how we had our first interaction and how it was just about two years ago that this happened. All because of a butt dial we're sitting right here <laughs> talking to each other and about to get into some shenanigans but join it so what was it before because you had a you had a little podcast I, and please don't take any disrespect when i say little podcast. oh i don't <laughs> um you had a podcast i think it was the it was random something because it was just kind of yeah. like and then now it's stinky dad <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, lots changed over the last couple of years. So we first met, I literally like started podcasting like two weeks before. And yeah. so I'd been on Podbean because, you know, like Google was like, hey, how do I start a podcast? And then I'm on Podbean. So then I seen like four years of random. I'm like, well, that looks kind of cool. So I clicked on that, just listening at work. Next thing you know, it's like phone ringing. And I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? And you're like, hello, Glenn. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, sorry. I accidentally called. Um all right and so yeah the, the podcast at the time uh i was calling it random random guy pod i think at yeah. the time because i'm like you know i want to talk sports maybe i'll talk food maybe i'll talk something else you know mm -hmm. and so i call it random or whatever and then turned into a random couple show which i did with my ex-girlfriend and now i have uh more podcasts that i know what to do with <laughs> so not only are you doing the one that you have solo or whatever you you got more than one podcast I'm currently at four active ones, plus one that my kid does. Yeah, yeah. You sound like me early on when I first started. It's just like, I don't well, know. I probably, and maybe you I can kind of, kind of, you know, give me your insights on it. When I first started or whatever, even that first year or the first two years or whatnot, which you're in that realm, it's like I was enjoying podcasting so much and just the interactions with people or whatever that I was like, well, fuck. If I can get more shows under my belt, you know, it can attract more people and then I can get more interactions. And then, you know, it just, you know, everybody will know who I am. You know, is it kind of like that for you? <laughs> it's yeah, kind of. It's like, you know, I had that live show or whatever, but then I'm like, ah, oh, my sports fandom isn't getting tickled during this. I can't do it. I need, I need a sports show. So I contact my best buddy. I'm like, Hey, let's do a sports show. And then, so we did that. And then that kind of faded out. Then I went back to doing a live show again, which wasn't sports. So, you know, it was just fun and stuff. I'm like, damn, well now I still need to tickle my sports urge. So then I went back to doing a sports show and then I have a baby on the way. So I'm oh. um, like, you know, I, I decided that, you know, I need to uh, get some bedtime stories for this little child, 
you know, cause you know, I don't want to actually have to do that when the baby's actually here. Mm -hmm. So I made a podcast called story time with sticky dad in which I tell short children's stories, uh, for toddlers. Word. So is it like existing stories or just stuff you're making up? I, I make the stories up. Uh, they're kind of based off our horror of a cat, uh, who's now pregnant. And I'm not sure how I'm supposed to tell a bunch of toddlers that, that our cat's a whore, but. Uh, so the stories are based on a cat, but uh, it's kind of on hold right now because I don't know how to tell a bunch of toddlers the cat's a whore. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that maybe I would just throw it in. It's like, you know, you know the cat Daisy is going to be having babies. She's a hoe. And just wait for all the angry emails from parents asking why their three-year-old's wondering what a hoe is. It's yeah. a garden tool, sweetie. It's well, a garden see, tool. This, this is my thoughts on things like that. You as a parent, it's, it's your job. 24 seven to assess through that stuff and whatnot. So you need to be listening to the podcast first before you let the kid just wander off and listen to it by themselves. That's what I was thinking. And actually with the descriptions for that one, I actually say hello parents uh, in the description. Cause I'm like, there's no way this toddler that's listening to this is going to be reading that description. So I might as well make it for the parents. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like, Oh, you know, these kids can't be listening to this rap music and all kinds of stuff and do all this stuff. It incites violence and yada, yada, yada. I said, well, you're there. Why don't you filter through the shit that they listen to? So you won't have this problem, you know? <laughs> yeah. Instead of like just handing your phone over to the kid on YouTube and say, go ham, uh, maybe check in on what they're listening to once in a while. I know I had to put a stop to one of my YouTube, my kid's YouTube thing. So he came back and he was doing this like, rubbing his finger gesture and he's like oh, yeah. on the face and like he, he just thought it was hilarious no idea what the context was like no you can't do that <laughs> i was like you need to stop watching whatever you're watching because that's not appropriate <laughs> yeah and then you know i have a younger child as well i got two older ones this is with the young one she's immersed in that youtube life and whatnot so i had to kind of pop my head in there every now and then be like what the hell are you watching yeah then, for sure you know sitting there for a moment or whatever and be like all right this seems all right not then i leave <laughs> yeah so i mean so damn so within the past two year span or whatever you had a kid uh no the kid's on the way like it's due oh, okay. like beginning of february uh so i already have one he's 10 now and he has his own podcast where he goes live on podbean and talks to the folks and makes me feel bad because he gets more in gifts than i do but <laughs> You know, it is what it is. The Q factor uh, is a money maker. Yeah. I've been thinking about the same thing with my kid because, like I said, she's entrenched in that YouTube lifestyle or whatever. She has the YouTube speak of like, hey, guys, what's going on, oh, yeah. guys? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Same with my kid. He's got that little, like, showman personality that he's got from watching all his YouTube videos with the GTA Twitch streamers and the Minecraft guys and whatnot. So um, have you seen the movie Free Guy yet? I have not. So, yeah, I, I took the young one to go see Free Guy or whatever, just me and her, just go hang out and shit. And um, they had people that had popular presence on YouTube and whatnot. So yeah. I didn't know who the hell none of these people were. I thought it was just like made up for the movie. And she seen these people and she was like, oh, that's such and such. Oh, that's such and such. such. I was like, never underestimate the power of YouTube. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, I'm guessing she does not follow you on YouTube, though. I'm guessing you're one person she's not following. Oh, no. And then, no. It's going to get crap last night. See, <laughs> and, the, and the thing about it is, is like, she knows I have a potty mouth. It's yeah. nothing that I, I, I don't, I don't restrain myself around my kids. Even my older two know, got to mean my older two are like damn near 21 and 19. So, I mean, they, they got a lot of that. But I mean, I don't, you know, hold back from yeah. my kid i mean i curse and everything and but i explained to her i was like hey i'm older than you <laughs> i've been around yeah. a while you know i have certain liberties that you as a child don't you know and it's like but i am not naive to where when you're out of my sight and you're with your friends that you're going to talk to your friends differently than what you talk to me and your mom here in this house but what i yeah. will say to you is when you're in the presence of an adult or whatever, or somebody in a you know authoritative position, you watch your freaking mouth, you know. Yeah, it's, it's that whole be respectful. I mean, like I hear my kid talk to his friends on his game, and I'm like, he's totally saying stuff he shouldn't be, but whatever, you know, he's mm -hmm. playing with his game. It's not like I'm completely 
dumb and don't realize that the kid's going to have swearing at some point. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I mean, I say I curse or whatever, but it's not like I'm, it's a part of my everyday language in the house around her, but like, she know when I'm pissed, <laughs> you know, pretty much. Yeah. You know, it, you, you got to throw in those words that they're not allowed to say just for, just for emphasis, you know? Yes. And it's like, I'm really mad at you right now. That may not work, but if you throw an F word in the middle, they get the point. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes, you know, we haven't got to that point yet to where, like, I haven't thrown out the I'm disappointed line. <laughs> it's like, you know, as a parent, you're always getting mad and they always seeing you flip your shit and, you know, just the curse words and all kinds of stuff. But if they do something like bad and you just come in there calm and be like, I'm disappointed in you. And they just oh, like, oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the oh, old why? Why the, I'm disappointed. Me? The, 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 I'm disappointed is the scariest. Is that two words or is that three words? Mm-hmm. I have, I guess that's three words, two or three, depending if you put the hyphen in there or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, those are the scariest words as a child is the very calm, quiet. I'm disappointed in you. Mm-hmm. And you're like, Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh crap. Oh no. I'm in trouble. Oh boy. Yeah. It's just like you let them stew in their room and they don't just like, oh. yeah. <laughs> You know, my kid, my, my, like my kid's 10 and like, he still, he, he still will fold on two when you do like the, I'll give you tell three. He still hasn't never, he, in his life, he still has to hit three. He, the, the, the fear of what comes after three is too much for him. He's like, no, I, I don't want to find out. No. Nah, and that's another thing too. I've seen that in public with other parents. I've seen it on television and whatnot, but ha- I don't know how I would react if I ever got to three. <laughs> Yeah, right. Like, I- I'm in the same position. I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do after three. Like, I don't have a plan. I'm I'm just hoping he's gonna cave after two because I don't know what happens after three either. <laughs> we haven't yeah, got it's there. Like, is this like one, two, two and a half, <laughs> two and three quarters? Please don't make me get to three because I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh, boy. I don't know. I, I never want to be in that situation or whatever. <laughs> me either. Me either. I'm just glad that he's too scared of what comes after three that he hasn't get there. But mm-hmm. I'm thinking that will change soon. Once he thinks he can kick my butt at more than video games. So, like, I mean, what even brought that on to, like, for you to even think of, you know, putting the kid out there in front of the microphone and letting him do to do his thing? Uh, it's, it's a guy, well, right, I, boy? Son? Yeah, it's a son. Yeah. All his right. name's Cameron. His podcast is Conversations hey, with Cameron. His child name is Cameron. Oh, nice. Well, there's a, there's a oh, his is a C, so they're they're a little different. There's no K, but anyway. Well, actually, I was doing like this pretend ad, and I wanted him to be a part of it because I think I think it was stackable kids huts is what I called it, and it was basically a uh, dog kennel. Oh, all right, you're explaining it, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm explaining. Don't worry. Uh, so what the idea was is like you know, is your house too small? Do you need more space for your kids? Presenting stackable kids huts. Personalized huts for your kids, where you can save space and stack them one up on top of each other. And it was basically like this, like BS, like dog kennel for kids thing, like just totally ridiculous. But I wanted him to like record this, like saying how much he disliked the idea and how stupid it was. And so he did that once. Next thing you know, he wanted to have his own podcast. So that's where it started. Word, word. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I could, I could dig that, and I, I would fully endorse. Your uh, stackable kid huts. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I feel like there's a lot of child welfare places that may not support it. But I feel parents are like, damn right. If I could like separate them and keep them on bay, great. He's like, get in your hut. <laughs> yeah. Get in your hut, boy. <laughs> yeah, just Dad, like, uh, I don't want the top hut tonight. Yeah, well, the stackable. You can put them down and put his on top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just like you know, I was dealing with the dog the other day. I was like, "Go to your house," and he'd be like, "Okay, please." Yeah, it's like, oh, fine. Waddle on upstairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's been two years or so now. You know, into your experience with podcasting and what yes. you're, you're branching out, doing your multiple, uh, you know, ventures and sporting, and you know, the kids' books, and your kids got a podcast. What are your impressions of podcasting and just everything surrounding it so far 
Well, I mean, I liked it when I first met you, and, and now it's just more of an expensive hobby that I'm yes. even more addicted to. I mean, now it's like I can't look at my phone without going, ooh, I should talk about that. You know, it's like you pick up your phone and you click over and you see a headline. It's like, ooh, content, ooh, content, ooh, yeah. content. It remind me of that uh, Family Guy episode. Ooh, a piece of candy. Ooh, a piece of candy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically what it is. <clears throat> At this point in my podcast life, I look at the news and everything that just screams content. It's like, ooh, how can I make fun of this? Ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh. Yeah. It's like so constant I mean, dopamine hits. Yeah. So it's it's been weird over the past couple of years with the COVID epidemic and all that stuff or pandemic or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, did it have any kind of like a, a dampening effect on plans that you may have had for your podcast? Because I know for me, uh, uh, prior to, I started to go out on the road and go to conventions and things like yes. that. And I had a big schedule for 2020, but you know, put the brakes on because of yeah. the shit that was going down. So have you experienced anything like that? Cause you kind of started uh, like in the middle of it almost. <laughs> Uh, when I started podcasting, like COVID was in China, like it was, it, it just started in China. By the time I was doing a live cast, like it f just got to America. So like, when I listened back, if like I ever went back and listened to my old content, it's basically like a day by day, like what was happening with COVID-19 up till like the world shut down and then a little bit into it before we shut down because it just got old, you know, mm -hmm. you only spend so many hours a day talking about COVID. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like most of the time it's like, fuck. <laughs> it's like everybody's at home drinking whiskey and like doing whatever. It's like nobody's life was very interesting. Our lives weren't very interesting. It, eventually it just it, it just went south because, you know, what the hell are you going to talk about? Nobody's done anything for two months. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then it was weird, too, because like I seen a meme just the other day. And we've been going through the COVID thing for a while. And there's kids that have been born that know nothing but, but these things that's going on right now currently. So the meme was a kid at the condiments stand. You know how to get the condiments with the pump on there. We can get the yeah. ketchup and the mustard and all that stuff. And he was sitting there with his mask on his face with his hand under the spigot for some ketchup thinking it was hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true, though. I, I can actually see that. Like, yeah, yeah, you no. Know, it's like, oh, I must be hand sanitizer. <laughs> and I was just thinking, like, there, there's kids that actually have no idea what another kid's smile looks like. Yeah, that's crazy. Too. Like, you go to kindergarten, you're like, if your kid started kindergarten, he has no idea what his classmate's mouth looked like, even. <laughs> yes, he doesn't know what poor dental hygiene looks like yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, he hasn't seen bad teeth yet. That's soon to come. <laughs> and I guess the kids with bad teeth are just happy that, uh, you know, they can't get made fun of it for it. They have a mask on. Word. So what really, what was the bug for you? Like what made you want to pull the trigger on this podcasting thing? Uh, well, for me, I always, I was a big fan of podcasts before. Like I'd always listen to like sports radio out of like Toronto, which is my sports team city. And so I always listened to that. I was like, oh, that'd be like really fun to just get on and talk or whatever. And so then I started and I'm like, oh yeah, you know, this is kind of cool. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's just kind of taken off from there and I've got a little more, into the nerdy side of things so i moved from like just going live off my phone to well i'm still on my phone now but yeah. in the general speaking i now have like audacity and like a legit mic and shit and you know it's a little more uh professional than it was i guess you could say okay none of which that you could break out for my show huh <laughs> well i didn't know how to i i probably could have i, oh, I didn't man, think of I'm that though you, man. I'm fucking uh, you, man. i should have logged on to this I should have logged on on the computer instead of on my phone. But. It's fine. It's fine. But um, I mean, th this is the important part. This is the audio portion of it. So you, you're good to go. You're coming in loud and clear. We ain't, nobody yeah, would have yeah. never known if I wouldn't have said nothing <laughs> unless yeah. they're watching the video. <laughs> yeah. You know, for the, for the people on the YouTube, I'm sorry that uh, I'm like the shadowy presence that looks like he's in witness protection. <laughs> Yeah, I might have to just, put, a, just a glorious shadow. I might have to put that effect in here to where you just like, <laughs> yeah, like right after I said that, just the next like five minutes is just like witness protection talk. <laughs> so, like, oh. you talk about the nerdy side of podcasting and everything like that. I have to ask you because yes. I mean, I guess I would be a nerd by proxy or whatever. I don't know. I love talking um, podcasting. What are you feeling about the? Um, the latest Spider-Man trailer, if you've seen that. I, 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 which which Spider-Man trailer is that? 
I've seen way too many Spider-Man things over the last like week. It's probably half of them are real and half of them were just memes based on like the old ones. Oh no. Just the the latest trailer for the film that'll be coming out here on the 17th of December. Oh. What 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 was I I, I haven't seen it. Tell me about oh, well, it. Well good. I I won't even bring it up or whatever cuz I mean for me personally, I've only seen it because I went to the movies and I was stuck yeah. in there doing the previews cuz like I've in recent years got away from just going seeking out trailers and watching previews because when I find out about a movie, I kind of just want to go in with like no knowledge of what's going on. And so I can be like oh, yeah. genuinely surprised about everything when I see it for the first time. So, so, so you're someone that would get seriously angry if raw was like, you recorded raw on PBR and then you got home. One of your kids is like, Oh man, did you see the main event? And you'd be like, Oh, please. Oh God, it's ruined. I can't even watch it now. Well, currently, uh, I don't watch so much of Raw. I mean, if I'm because I was just sitting in here waiting for you to pop up, so I just had it on. I mean, you know, just that's a whole conversation in itself. It's just like that product over there right now isn't really. You, you jumped a you jumped the AW as yes. for fandom. Yes, yes, I did. Which oh. I mean, I keep tabs on the WWE because it was my first experience with professional wrestling and everything growing up and all that stuff. So and plus, I do a wrestling podcast now to where I have to kind of keep yeah. up with the yeah, these things sure. or not. But if I ain't gotta watch it, I ain't I ain't watching it. So to your point is, if it was a prime time to where I well, let's use AEW as the example. So yes. I got it recorded. I get home and my kid be like, "Oh, motherfucker, CM Punk did some things," and I would probably like count to three at my child for saying motherfucker CM <laughs> Punk. <laughs> but um. And she's like, yeah, CM Punk did the thing with the stuff and it was so cool. I would probably not be so much upset. I would probably be astounded by, wow, you watched the whole episode of Dynamite? Cool. That's awesome. And then I would <laughs> probably never watch the episode again because she told me what happened. And this is like, if I know what's going to happen, I don't even want to watch it anymore. <laughs> I know, like, I was, a, I was a big wrestling fan in high school, which I guess is now, like, 16 17 years ago i remember i tune in to wwe every now and then and it seems like nothing's changed like it's the same people and like how in 20 years have none of you guys aged changed or anything and like the storyline is still the same <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and that's kind of sad and that's what um people are currently talking about how you know it was good when it was old because it was the first of its kind now yeah. i mean I know every we talk about retro culture and everything coming back from being old to being new again or whatever, but that doesn't work in every medium. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think WWE at this point is just like a violent soap opera, really. It was I, more it's more soap opera than it is violent, because it's just like there's more yeah. talking than there is wrestling. <laughs> well, I, I I actually come to think of it, uh I actually preferred WCW back in the day. For that exact reason is so that I wanted to see like the actual wrestling. I wanted the storyline to be based around the matches, not based on something in the background. Like, yeah, do I care about who got knocked up backstage? Not really. Like, just show me the match. Yeah. And that's uh, another thing with the age that we live in now to where we have access to everything and people and all kinds of stuff to where, you know, the veil has been lifted. We know too much. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so, you know, I don't know, is how, how do we put on a compelling product at, such as professional wrestling when everybody knows what's going on behind the scenes, you know? I know I was stooping at some of the videos you had from the New Texas Professional Wrestling yeah, new show Texas, you went to. Yeah, New Texas. And Club. I was like, I was watching the clips. And I'm like, this is so weird uh, watching like wrestling without like the 20,000 screaming fans. And like, you know, you can hear each individual cheer and like a good job from the crowd. I'm like, well, that's just weird. Like, it's not yeah. normally that audible. I'm like, it's so weird watching this. Like you hear the mats and everything. It's like, wow, it's almost like artwork when you have that small crowd. It's less of a presentation, I guess, would be yeah. the maybe the word for it. It's just like what I is almost like Broadway. You know, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's a live performance that you go to see and the people are just there. And what I like about New Texas Pro and all the other people that run shows and that are that um that facility is just like it's almost a community type aspect or whatever, because when the wrestlers come there, they, you know, they know the guy that's in the front row. They know this person here and, they, and yeah. vice versa and whatnot. You know, they bring gifts. They give them high fives. They talk to them. 
after the show. Like, you know, they've been it's doing like, it for years and some of them have. Would you suggest this kind of like the really, really old school wrestling, like before WWE went to TV and like all the, like the, you know, the world televised coverage of WWE where like the wrestlers literally were on the road traveling from town to town, putting on shows. And it was kind of like one of those, like, that's your idol that you grew up watching. You know, it's not some guy that your parents are putting your, their hands over their kids' eyes going, oh, you can't see that. Well, like with, with, with these independent shows, man, I just like you get it all because you there's there was a little kid there. He could have been no more than maybe seven or eight years old, little little guy. And he was there and he knew everybody's name that came out from the curtain. And wow. then he, he had signs up for his favorite wrestler and everything. And, you know, they would come around the ring and they would see him with his sign. They give him a fist bump or a high five or whatever. And it oh, was yeah. like wow this is fucking crazy and then <laughs> and it's funny because he's almost like a, a, a anti-fan in a way because like all right oh. everybody every the champion comes out so normally you know you're the champion you're the good guy everybody cheer for the champ but the kid was cheering for the other person <laughs> oh he, he loved his underdogs yeah so i, I enjoyed that. That, that i like seeing stuff like that and that little kid is full of sugar and all kinds of other things because they had to from another show the I guess a couple nights prior, they had the steel cage that they used, like up against the yeah. wall in the back of the arena. And the kid was climbing on the cage. I was like, Who, where's your parent? <laughs> the kid got dropped off at the wrestling show and parents went to the bar next door or something. <laughs> like, no, you, you, I just hear somebody from across the room. One, two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the kid yeah just jump off the cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a flying starfish onto his mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it, it's great it's just like and then i help out with the show sometimes so like i'll get there extra early and everything while they're training and setting up and doing stuff and then i guess because i'm there helping or doing some things you know sometimes you know they think i'm somebody of importance because i'm a fairly new face there so you know people scout this is kind of like sports it's, you know they they scouting the, the rookie uh pitcher and all that stuff and everything so you know you don't know who's in the crowd watching. So people come introduce themselves and shake my hand. And some of the ladies give me hugs. And I'm just like, I don't know what's going on right now, but I'm not opposed to it. <laughs> and that's where you hand them a little card with a link to the website saying, Hey, I'm a podcaster yeah. and I'd be yeah. happy to talk to you. But you know what? I've been doing this for going on what five, six years or whatever. And it's just like, you think I would be like that, but I, I'm really not. You know, I'll get out there. With, I'll, There's a level of shame about it, isn't there? I, I feel like when you're going out trying to find a podcast guest, it by the time you actually get around to asking if you're not their buddy, it's like you had to like – really work your way up to it. I mean, there's a good chance that you probably drank like six or seven drinks just to take the shame out of it before you yeah. asked. And then like, you don't want to look to see what they said because you're worried. It's like, oh God, oh God, did they block me? <laughs> yeah, I don't, know. I don't know if it's like a guilt or a shame thing or whatever, but it's more like, you know, they are people just like you and me and everything. And they do yeah. this thing that you I thoroughly enjoy. And it's just like, I don't know. It's just like, you know, they come in there, they beat themselves up and over, and here I come sliding in. Hey, you want to do a podcast or whatever? It's just like, I, I don't know. I just don't feel right about doing shit like that. I have to ask, though. So that guy on Twitter, that like a professional wrestler, says, do not DM me for a podcast. Did you Did you DM him? No, I did not. Oh. Which one uh, was, was that, like, anyway? I forgot. I, I don't remember who it was, but uh, it was like, I can't remember who the, who the wrestler was. So like, Oh, yeah, Aaron Rex. That's the dude that used to be Damian Sandow. Never heard of him. Yeah, so yeah, that shows how much you were into wrestling. <laughs> he I, was a big I, thing uh, a couple, couple years back, so I mean. I, I fully admitted that I was into wrestling in like the early 2000s. Yeah, WC dubs. But like, um, I don't know, because I've had, you know, <laughs> because of that show, the New Texas Pro Wrestling, yeah. Um, I sent a inquiry out to a professional wrestler, you know, seeing if um, I can get him on my podcast. And at one point in time, he said yes, but I never heard from him again, which is understandable because he's actually on TV and touring and doing things. So I can understand that, you know, not yeah. hearing back from him. But he wind up popping up at one of the new Texas Pro shows. So I was like, hey, you remember that time that we talked and you said you wanted to do the podcast or whatever? And then he's like, <laughs> He said, you still want to do it? I was like, 
yes, I do. And he gave me his like, no shit telephone number, you know, oh, crazy. put it in my phone. And then, um, you know, a, he, a week or so passed and, um, I hit him up on his phone and he said he couldn't do it right now, but he was coming back to do another new Texas pro show. And if I could be there, we could do something before the show or after the show. And I was like, cool. yeah, but I couldn't go because I had to work. And then, oh. then later on after that, he also made the same tweet that that guy did. He's like, Hey, don't ask me to be on your podcast. And I was like, Oh fuck. And then I tweeted him back. I was like, so I guess this is why you never asked me back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I, I imagine that with how uh, many wrestling podcasts are out there, he probably gets asked a lot. Yeah, and then like his point was like, he like I'm tired of going on these shows asking me the same questions, and daggone, you know, on some of these podcasts that don't even get a lot of listens or views and all kinds of stuff like that. He's like, don't ask me to be on your podcast. So I was like, fuck, he didn't even give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> shit you didn't even ask how many downloads i get i'm much better than these guys <laughs> and then I mean, it's obvious that you never listen to my show <laughs> yeah but, you know i mean i still i look at his number every now and then i was like should i text or call this motherfucker and then i'll just be like eh, fuck it i mean you if send him a picture of boobs and he probably will respond to that because you know it's a guy and you know it's a boob pick he, he won't remember what the number is <laughs> yeah. and then I'm just like, this random guy yeah, I'm just always like, I'm under the impression of just like, if it's meant to happen, it'll happen. I'm not going to force the issue or whatever, and I'm not going to chase a motherfucker either. Who, who's your top three wrestlers that if you could, like, snap your fingers and have on your podcast tomorrow, what's your top three? Oh, Jonathan Gresham. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe his wife, but that doesn't count. I mean, she is a wrestler, but, you know, I don't know. Uh... Jonathan Gresham, maybe, um, mm, it, it's, it's so many that's running through my mind right now, but Jonathan Gresham is definitely number one at the top of the list and everything. And he just, uh, he's launching a, his own wrestling promotion here pretty soon. Interesting. And I, I, I reached out, but to no avail, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's probably busy launching this company that's coming up here in the next two months or so. So, I mean, understandable. You know, yeah. Um, I, I don't know, man. I can easily just say The Rock, but I mean, is he? Oh, really everybody wants The Rock. <laughs> I think I think he's more Dwayne Johnson at this point. I think like The Rock's like an add-on feature to him at this yeah. point. He's it's, it's, it's DLC for Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's distanced himself from the wrestling persona enough. I don't think anybody's asking what the bottom line is anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's. If I pick, oh wait, I was the wrong wrestler. I was Stone Cold. Yeah. If I <laughs> if I pick anybody, you know, it would probably be the guys that are doing good right now on the independence. I mean, I would love to maybe have an AJ Styles or somebody on here. Uh, That'd be know, a sick pod. Or freaking, I don't know, just whoever in any any one combination of the Young Bucks or anything like that. That that would be pretty cool. But I would probably pick Jonathan Gresham. Um, I'm thinking of another guy, AJ Gray, and um, just for the fuck of it, I don't know if I could pull it off or whatever, because I don't know what literally what we would talk about. Look up a guy named Nick Gage. Nick Gage. Yes, look him up. You know, I mean, not I right now. I can't come on my phone. <laughs> yeah, not right now. But it's like whenever you get the time, look up a professional wrestler named Nick Gage, because with these podcasts, I try to challenge myself. Cause like, yeah, it's just so many different people, so many personalities out there in the world or whatever. And it's just like, you can't talk to everybody the same. So it's just like, I would try to pick somebody that I would perceive would be kind of difficult for me to relate with and try to, you know, see what I can pull out of that to either to my, uh, <laughs> failure or, you know, whatever, <laughs> but I want to try. <laughs> Sometimes, some, I mean, like, as a podcaster, sometimes you listen to a podcast and you're like, oh my God, the guest is giving absolutely nothing to work with here. Oh, <laughs> I'm just boy. like, oh my God, like I have to give it to the host here for trying to string this thing along because he's getting nothing. <laughs> yeah, I've learned that in episode 11. <laughs> to oh, where, like, getting. 
I had a guy that I worked with because I was still in the military when I started the show. So I was picking people, you know, that I worked with that had like, you know, side hustles and stuff outside of work. Cause I, I knew a guy that I worked with. He uh, was trying to launch a clothing line. He was in the motorcycle uh, club and, you know, he, uh, a DJ, he did all kinds of shit after working hours. So I was like, Oh yeah, man, we got, we'll have plenty of shit to talk about. So I, you know, I bring my equipment to his house. I set it up and everything and we get to talk. And I was like, Hey man, so what do you think about this? Oh, it's cool. Yeah, it's like, oh, care span on that and there, it's sir. cool because... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like, don't make me first grade teacher you. Please, expand on your thought. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you, since then, you know, he just got out of the military not too long ago, um, started doing security, then eventually he uh, became a weapons instructor, then he opened up a, a weapons store. You know, he sells weapons and things, and he does um, firearm instruction. So I got him back on many years later to kind of promote his business and everything. And I told him the same thing that I told you. And I was like, man, I remember the first time you got on here and you just like, whatever, whatever. You just didn't know how to talk. He's like, he's like, I'm glad you said something because I didn't know what we was going to talk about today. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little worried like three hours ago. I'm like, oh, crap. I'm doing that podcast for all. But like, I don't even know what we're going to talk about. I'm like, huh? I'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. And I realized it was random. I'm like, chances are it's just going to go wherever it goes. And that's what it is. Yes. And I, you know, um, tips and anything that I could get, ever give to somebody, if you're a guest on someone else's show or whatever, I mean, shit, make them a part of their own show too. I mean, if you got any questions or queries or anything that, you know, stick out in your mind, bring that shit up. It's another piece of the conversation and whatnot. It's a two way street. You know, I want people to know about you and you know, you just, you know, maybe there's some things you want to know too. You know I mean, to be fair, this is my first real podcast hit besides like my bump calls on Podbean Lives. This is my first true podcast hit. Word. So, see so I, I didn't know what I was doing going into this either. I was just like, I'll play it by ear. Yeah. It can't be the worst thing in the world. No. Put some <laughs> horns like, on it. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I love being one, one main reason. I love being a guest on other people's show is because I ain't got to edit shit. <laughs> I know. I was thinking that myself. I'm like, it's going to be so nice after this done. I can just walk away from it and wait for the tweet to go out about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I just show up, uh, be me or whatever version of me they need me to be, I guess. And then uh, leave. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I don't feel need to put on a show for you per se. I mean, it's a show. It's a three R show right yeah. here on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. But, you know, I, I can just be Glenn of B. I don't have to try and be someone else for this show. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, two years in for you and whatnot. I mean, what what other goals do you got move, moving forward? Are you got any plans in your head or any ideas and whatnot? Uh, well, I, I want to see where this sports thing goes. So I called this show uh, five minutes for mostly a hockey pod. pod that's what mm -hmm. I called it. And so it's basically I'm like five days a week. I'm jumping on just to talk hockey and whatever catches my mind for whatever. And then I'm hoping to have merch at some point. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the most part, I just kind of play it day by day. You know, I, I, I want to turn it into a business, but I'm having issues uh, figuring out how. Oh, so you're trying to secure an LLC and all kinds of yes, stuff? Yes, like but that's, it's, I think it's a little different in Canada as I am, oh, okay. you know, Canadian and whatnot. I think it's a little bit different. And so far, I've, I've found out, like, you know, a lot of good things about it, but I haven't found out exactly uh, where to go and how to do it. Word. So, I mean, I, I would be able to help you out, but I don't know the stuff about Canada. So, <laughs> that, that's, yeah, yeah. It's kind of where our worlds collide because uh, yeah. I've done the same thing. It's just like you put all kinds of money into this hobby or whatever, yeah. and you, you want some of them dividends back. So, I, I formed an LLC for this and you know i folded all the shit into here and you know i filed the shit on my taxes <laughs> yeah yeah how does that work so it, it was like i i don't know if your podcast does make money or not i don't know if you want to actually divulge <laughs> that information but like it, it it doesn't so it's just basically works as a tax write-off for you yeah you just much. write so, off the hosting fees and whatever else you put into it yeah so anything that i pay for in um anything that i pay for in damn, I, I don't know what I was gonna say. Anything that I pay for for the podcast, 
you know, I saved my receipts. Uh, I got my expenditure report or everything that I spent and everything, turn it in with my taxes. And, you know, they just, you know, I either get something back or I don't, but it's all yeah. accounted for. <laughs> Well, that's good. Uh, well, at least you know exactly how much you're spending too. I mean, having that expenditure chart probably works whether it's a business or not, because at least you can, uh, even the wife says you're spending too much on it, you can go, no, I'm not. I'm on budget. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here's, here's the expenditure chart. Mm -hmm. It's just like, if I go anywhere in, in, in service of this podcast, it's just like, let me get that receipt player. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Meals, gas, all that shit. You know, just give me the receipt. <laughs> Thank you. They, they, they don't provide that for you when you do uh, appearances and whatnot. They they don't provide a meal for you. They still make you pay for that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, because it's just not like they're not. It, it's some places if you go to conventions, obviously you pay the vendor for your food and whatnot. But there's yeah. been some places that I've been to where, like, you know, somebody fronted me a plate, and I was like, all right, I'm I'm cool with this. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Yes. I'll take all the free foods that I can get. <laughs> yeah. I, I always tell people, it's like, hey, listen to my podcast. It's free. I mean, you can't beat it. Like, worst case scenario, you're going to waste an hour of your life and that you won't get back. But you won't have wasted any money on it. Yeah. And then, you know, I can remember earlier on, I got uh, business cards and stuff printed out for the show. And what I would do is um, I would get a whole stack of uh, the cards. And I would go into Walmart and I would just sporadically place them throughout the store. I would put them in like pockets of uh, button up shirts and stuff. And I would <laughs> put them in the, uh, th the between the bread aisle and in the freezer at the checkout counter and all kinds of shit. And then I had stickers, too. I would stick the stickers on all kinds of shit just because. Uh, do, do you know if anyone listened to your podcast based on finding a three hour show card in their Walmart tuxedo pocket? Nobody has ever told me, but I would like to think so in my mind that it's happened. <laughs> yeah. Some person's like, oh, cool. I wonder what this is. Yeah. I know I've walked Check around with, um, you know, my show logo on a shirt or whatever. And a lady rolled by me in a motorized scooter at the Walmart. And she's like, is that your podcast? I was like, well, yes, it is. She's like, oh, and she's like, can I take a picture of your shirt? I was like, yeah. And she took a picture of my shirt. Hopefully she's still listening or she chimed in and checked it out but that was pretty cool the, the fact that the lady in the motorized scooter knew what a podcast was was actually exactly. probably the shocking part of that conversation <laughs> that, but, yeah. you know what a podcast is ma'am that's the most shocking thing that you know it, it's just like it blew my freaking mind also like here in houston um i think for at least two years we a whole bunch of the local podcasters we got together and did this thing called the houston podcast fest you know it was just a pretty much the little circle of uh, local podcasters or whatever. We all got together at a place and we just told people that we were going to be there. You know, if you wanted to come hang out, come hang out. You know, we had food and drink and everything. Just everybody come, you know, mingle, network and all kinds of shit. So yeah. they had an older group of ladies that showed up and we didn't know if they were podcasters or not, but they came in because one of the shows in the little group did like the true crime horror shit or whatever so they was real into that so they showed up because they showed up and it was like yeah. older ladies that was there coming to see about these podcasts and i was just like you know it was just kind of like the lady in the scooter or whatever i was like wow <laughs> i didn't i didn't know people listen to podcasts <laughs> i know my, my my girlfriend my current girlfriend right now and like my kid's mother she she's not really like a massive podcast person, mm -hmm. but she will spend hours on YouTube with the true crime stuff. I don't know what it is about women in true crime. They're, they're, they're weird like that. But they, they beat that shit up. Yeah. And if, if you get a woman that does the true crime show, I mean, phew, that's a whole other oh, kettle. He, he, yeah. I mean, everyone is a female hosted true crime show on YouTube. <laughs> I'm just like, what is with these women and like all about their like crimes of whatever. It's like weird. Mm -hmm. And it, well, so, you know, since you've been a fan of podcasting and you're now immersed in the world of podcasting or whatever, what do you think about the state of podcasting as it is? What I mean by that is just like um, when I first started, there was like hundreds of thousands of podcasts. Now there are literally millions of podcasts. And then we see these lucrative deals with uh, certain celebrities and Spotify and other 
uh, major platforms and whatnot. So, I mean, just what are your overall thoughts about podcasting as a whole? Uh, well, I mean, I came into it pretty naive thinking that it wouldn't be that difficult to like, you know, get a thousand downloads on an episode like, oh, that's easy. No problem. Two years into it, I'm realizing that I should really have been as happy with 100 because that's yeah. probably as much as it goes, as size it goes. But, you know, it is it's it's always going to be there. I think like I, I don't really care to listen to like the nbc podcast or cnn podcast like it's not my thing i'm like eh, whatever and like i like listening to other people's shows like checking out random random rob ramblings with rob uh, a tongue twister and a good listen is always I fun i did it like that on purpose <laughs> i know i actually when i was going back to listen to my call in just as a reminder of what random random ramblings with rob is and you said i love going on other people's show because they get their tongue tied on and i'm like oh i can say it no problem in my head i'm saying it then i go say it out loud and get my tongue tied i forgot about my logo up here in the corner but oh well <laughs> we only oh, you forgot the logo. whatever yeah 48 minutes and we we're finally telling people what the show is Yes. I mean, it's, it's not like it's not in the description or anywhere around it. Right. Or I didn't know the do, show. Yeah. Or I didn't give this long, lengthy ass intro at the beginning. <laughs> oh, it wasn't that long. I mean, yeah. you, 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 pro you could have been more like uh, our rich podcaster, Joe Rogan, and do 17 minute intros of nothing. Word, man. I have never listened to that man's show. I mean, I've seen clips on the internet or anything like that, but I have never tuned in to his feed or searched it to download it to listen to it. Never. I, I did before I ever got into podcasting and literally I'd have to like be tapping like the past three seconds. And finally, I just learned just like scroll past the first 15 minutes because all it is is sponsor reads for 15 mm -hmm. minutes. He says, hello. And then there's 17 minutes of ads and then he gets into a show. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and then, Which then uh, there's no ads which is fine so like you can just know to skip past the first 15 yeah. minutes <laughs> and then i can't really be mad at that as well because like doing this for a while you figure that unless you are at the top of the show saying hey stick around to the end because i got something to say most people won't do that because they know once you close out they'll be like all right that's it i'm out of here or sometimes they may not even get to the end so they miss all this pertinent information that you got at the end so you got to throw it all in the front <laughs> yeah front lo front load your ads because that's when people are actually going to listen to it for your uh whatever that cpm is or whatever mm -hmm. i don't know how that works so i mean i did get myself a sponsor on actually the app was even your suggestion i asked you how to how, how you get the same thing you're like hey check out smart post app and then like i shot them out and then shaking myself a sponsor out of them word Damn, yeah. how, how did I, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I don't Because uh, you had hooks, rubs, and spices. You don't need them. Yeah, you're right. Hooks, yeah. rubs, and spices. Get my yes. mannequin here with my, my lucha mask. <laughs> nice. That's an <laughs> epic mask. That's a La, La Sombra, uh, who is currently now Andrade El Idolo in uh, AEW, formerly of WWE fame. Yeah, seems like everybody's of WWE fame at some point or other. Even the people that were like big stars in like WWE in the nineties, they actually started in WWE, left, went to WCW, came back again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it is weird because like this whole crop of people that's kind of migrating away from WWE, going to AEW and other places and whatnot, is because they had a whole thing about they were the only show in town for the longest, so they hoarded up all the talent. And everything and just kept them under their thumb and didn't do shit with them or whatever and now you know they're starting to Can't release them and let them go and it is just like all right they're flourishing somewhere else and now it's like oh i'm kicking myself in the ass because i had this guy and i could have did stuff with him but fuck me because i want to do what i want <laughs> and i listen my, to crea my creative team didn't see the potential in this guy and now look where he is he's uh losing us millions by sending all our customers elsewhere <laughs> yeah Oh, and back to the original topic, which is podcasting. Uh, you know, I, I think for independent podcasters, there's apps such as Good Pods now, which are kind of like their algorithm is set up to make it like, you know, more beneficial for the small guy. You know, uh, the, their, their whole premise, their whole algorithm is set up for shares and reviews and whatnot and less about the actual downloads. So like all of a sudden you can be on like the independent Good Pods charts on three people listening because you shared your show in there. And so that's 
kind of where it is is the, I, I think we're going to see more apps uh, copycat that that idea and set it up more to where it it helps like guys like you and me who you know are just doing this out of our house you know just yeah. for fun work full time jobs yada 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 and less less uh, favoring like Conan O'Brien who obviously needs more money for to do his podcast because he doesn't <laughs> have enough already it's like really come on like you have enough money. Mm, yeah, you need a podcast then, too. Yeah, and then like um, somebody broke it down to me in a way that made me be like, "All right, I mean, maybe I'm not as uh, much of as an asshole as I thought I was." It's just like I used to hate them bastards, like Joe Rogan, Conan O'Brien, all those people. It was like they're coming into my space and they're going taking the attention away from us, all the independent podcasters and everything. But I had a guest on, I think it was Al Mega or whatever, and he was like, "Nah, man, you can't look at it like that because." Say you and, you know, star such and such do the same type of podcast. People will go listen to his show and try to find other shows that are like his. And yours is something like his. So it's bringing attention to your genre, you know, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, that makes sense. I get it now. But I still don't like it. <laughs> Oh, it's uh, I, I find it more annoying when you see celebrities that like just start now. So like, you know, we are how many years two six and two years into podcasting, then we'll see like, you know, Tom Cruise for just the random name. Decides mm-hmm. to start a podcast and his first episode gets like a hundred thousand downloads and you're like, Oh, come on, man. Come on. Mm-hmm. Why? Is it simply you know? we're not Tom Cruise? It, we're not Tom Cruise. We don't have millions and millions of fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we'll get there one day. I mean, one day, just, one day. Just in I'm just going to ride Rob's coattails. Yeah, just just in wrestling terms or whatever. Most professional wrestlers don't really hit the big time until they're like past ten years in. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So I mean, I don't know. We just it's longevity and consistency. That's that's all this is right now. Is is it's the long race, the slow race. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a very slow race in podcasting. Yeah, very very slow. But I am confident that uh, great things will come from this journey that we're taking right now, whether it not even be in podcasting, but because of podcasting. So, I mean, yeah, you know, just got to wait and see. I, I know, like, I also have way more friends that live absolutely nowhere near me just by being in podcasting. Like, all of a sudden, like, I'm friends with a guy in Houston up here in, you know, middle of nowhere, Canada. Friends with a guy in Illinois. Nowhere, Canada. Friends with someone in New York, <laughs> California. It's like, yeah. wow! I just all of a sudden have friends all over the world. Mm-hmm. You know, I was talking to somebody about that uh, not too long ago. To where it was like, I went to visit a place for the first time, or just for something, and I was like posting pictures, like, "Hey, I'm here. I'm doing this thing." And they were like, "You in my city? Why you didn't say nothing?" I was like, "Oh shit! I forgot you lived here, or I didn't know you lived here." So, <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? So. I don't, I don't have that type of fan base. I know my, when my kid was doing a live, uh, he was talking to one of my friends because he gets hit my friend to co-host because, you know, dad's not cool enough to co-host with them. He's got to get one of dad's friends to co-host with them. So dad's <laughs> in the other room listening in like one of those peasant peoples while he's hosting his podcast with, his, with my friend. <laughs> and next thing you know, uh, he, convinced, he had him convinced that he was going there for Christmas uh, to have a Nerf gun war. Mm. had him convinced the next day he's like oh when are we going to see him i'm like we're, we're, we're not like that was a joke sorry bud <laughs> and then you see the the the, the young man tears just <laughs> oh it he he, he he realized pretty quickly he's like oh yeah this probably was a joke not that he was thinking about it but mm-hmm. then he did a call to action for nerf guns because i'm like you know you know, everybody does their call to action, but I have too much saying myself. I can't do my call to action. You know, I can't just say, hey, give me money for a new mic. Can't do it. I'm too shameful. I'm like, oops, my kid's shameless. I'll get him to do it. And I'm like, <laughs> but he's going to want something out of this. So I'm going to like, okay, I'll just make it funny where he's like, oh, I think we're good. Okay. Uh, so where I'm like, you can ask for Nerf guns in it and I'm going to tell you no but you can ask for Nerf guns in the video. It's like, all right, he's all down for it. And it turned out that everybody is more interested in sending this 10 year old Nerf guns than they had any interest in giving me $5 for anything for the podcast. Yeah. It'd be like that sometimes. 
Yeah. You should start using that, Rob. Just get the, 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 the cutest uh, kid uh, on the day to do a call to action uh, to go to Patreon and uh, sign up for three R shows, Patreon feed. Well, you know what? I got rid of my Patreon. Never mind. We will send him somewhere else to, uh, to give Rob money. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the thing with Patreon or whatever. I mean, people of acclaim, they can have it to where like, hey, if you want to support the show, give me money or whatever. You don't get shit back in return, but my love and respect or some shit or whatever. Some people can yeah. do that. Not all of us can do that. And I figure like with the Patreon stuff or whatever, if you're going to do a Patreon, you got to have some incentive to do that or whatnot to where like as you were saying, I got a full time fucking job. And if you've been listening to the past couple of episodes for, you know, the over the past couple of months, I've been more at that job than I have been at home. So it's hard yeah. for me to come here, try to do, you know, an interview like with you or something, then turn around, do some Patreon shit, then turn around and then got to be up in like two hours after that to get up and get ready to go to work and be out for 12 hours and come back and nah, not play. It just so, doesn't work. No. It doesn't fit into the schedule for me to try to do a lot of extra work. So I just cut the Patreon out altogether. I know when I first got into podcasting, I was doing the lives and like all my listeners are like, hey, you should get Patreon. You should get Patreon. I'm like, all right, I'll get Patreon. I mean, people want to give me money. That's cool. I'll get Patreon. No, no, we want to give me money. They just said you should get it. Yeah. And that's, that's <laughs> another thing that you'll run into in, to this game or whatever is just like. Even with merchandise or whatever, I got an ass load of merchandise. I haven't got anything new in a while, but I have tons and tons of merchandise on my website, randomrob.com. And um, it's just like, oh, man, you should make this shirt or you should do this design or whatever. And I do those things that they say or whatever. I put it up on the website. I advertise it and not a one moves. So I'm just yeah, like, it's like, oh, come on, man. So why would you say something like that if you're not going to support you know, I only did it. It's not like it's really cost them anything because I do a third party. I just come up with the design and they slap it on the shirt and do all the work. But, you know, it's just like the fact that I did put in the time to make the design and, you know, go through all the rigmarole of setting up a shop in the storefront and all this other bullshit. And yeah, they don't want to buy it. So. So you have the merch store, but it's not exactly the busiest store in the world. No. Nah. And then I haven't yeah. plugged it in a long time. It's just like. If you're going to support, you're going to support. I mean, I don't, I mean, as much as we would love to make money off of this shit, I would love to make some money off of shit. I would, I would, I only want to make enough money for the show to sustain itself. Yeah. I mean, I profit, it would be a bonus, but the goal well, is always for, been for the show to sustain itself. And I mean, as long as you're having fun doing it, I don't think any of us in podcasting, if, as long as we're having fun, I don't think we care about the money. I mean, yeah, it's nice. It's cool. Like, thank oh, you. It. But yeah. it's not it's not crucial to my continuing. Yeah. I mean, I started this w with no intention of somebody giving me money. I started this because, you know, it's something that I wanted to do. And it just it grew from a hobby to like almost a part of my life and shit. So, was making money in podcasting even like something people were doing back when you started? Like six years ago, you said there's only like 100,000 podcasts on the Apple feed. And now I think last time I heard there was north of 3 million podcasts just on Apple Podcasts. That's not yeah. including Spotify with so all I mean, the ones the that are. The, the only people that I can recall that was making money or whatever was just like freaking Kevin Smith and the Joe Rogan and all those guys or whatever. Yeah. And then a lot of people started making those big money deals later on after that or whatever. They locked Joe Rogan down for a hundred million dollars. <laughs> so this is like, wow. I mean, can I get somebody to buy a t-shirt for 20 bucks? <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm pretty sure if anyone came to you tomorrow and said, I'll give you $50,000, quit your job and I'll pay $50,000 a year to do your podcast. You'd probably be like, damn right, homie. I'll do this five days a week. <laughs> Shit. My thing would be since I've been doing it the way that I've been doing it for so long, it's just like, what would I do five days a week? You know? Yeah. Well, I know, like, <laughs> yeah, for I mean, me, that, I. That's like my only thing or whatever. It's just, and that's another thing about taking money or whatever, because it's like, if somebody gives you money, you got to produce. Yeah. You know? Exactly. So I need like, for it. Like, even right now, for free, it's like, I don't even know what I could do five days a week off the top of my head for free, let alone somebody giving me money to do it. 
you know? <laughs> That's but, true. I mean, it would be different because like what you're saying, somebody say, I'll give you $50,000 a year or whatever. I mean, that wouldn't be too bad because I can stay home and then, you know, I could go places too and do some stuff. I mean, I would have more time to, you know, let the creative juices flow than rather than, all right, I need to hurry up and cut this shit here because I got to go to sleep, get my clothes ready, you know, get ready for work tomorrow and pay this bill yeah. and do all this other shit. I mean, all those things would be further away and it would just, you know, leave me more space to create and think about shit or whatever. But yeah, you know. it's, the, it's the problem when you're your own producer, editor, marketing uh, and everything, you know, when you got like 23 job titles uh, for the one podcast, it makes it hard to keep one hat on for any length of time. Yeah. So I'll, am I going to pay one hundred and fifty dollars in Google ads or I'm going to take the same hundred and fifty dollars and buy groceries for my house and some school stuff for my kid? Yeah, I'm going to take yeah, care of my right. family first, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like Google ads. I've never even bought a Google ad before. I, I don't know. Do they work? I mean, Have you I've tried a, it? I've got a voucher for one once and then I, I tried it out or whatever. I mean, I guess I got some increase, but I mean, there's nothing I was really paying attention to because, I mean, I'll check the numbers every now and then, you know, the only time I might check the numbers is like, you know, if you you have pod bean. So you go in there, yeah. you upload your episode or whatever. And I mean, they slap you in the face with it. So, I mean, I see it at least once a week or sometimes I just kind of hurry up and <laughs> tap past it or whatever. So I was like, I get the shit on my face. <laughs> I know sometimes the numbers can get like a little too, uh, a little too, uh, you get focused on a little too much and the fun goes away almost in some sense. Yeah. Exactly. Cause I know for a point in time, I was like, my shit went way up. Like, I was like, why is my shit, you know, climbing like this? I mean, I wouldn't complain about it. I was like, but what, what am I doing? What's happening? And then, you know, it just dropped back down to normal. And then it went back up again, stayed for a little while. And it went back to, you know, normal stuff. And I was just like, what the fuck was happening? What was I doing? <laughs> uh, I, what, what, what someone told me once was someone that has their own hosting platform is sometimes like you'll just like get lucky that like a whole bunch of people like search random mm -hmm. all, for a week. And, you know, so like a whole bunch of people just happen to search that. And all of a sudden, you know, you're featuring on some little podcast platform and a whole bunch of downloads happen. Mm hmm. I know yeah, when yeah, I was my. Yeah, I think I that didn't... happened at one time too, to where like I started registering my podcast on different streaming platforms and shit or whatever. That might have caused the spike to go up because it's new people on this platform just like, oh, it's a thing here. <laughs> yeah. I, I just always have counted that to like just like getting lucky almost to a point. It's yeah. Because like, yeah. I know I had, I had one episode that like had like 600 downloads more than every other episode. And I'm like, what is going on? And then I went and looked at it and like that episode had like 500 downloads in Ireland. I'm like, what the hell is going on in Ireland? Why is this so popular? Nothing exciting happened in this one particular episode. There was nothing to it. But for whatever reason, 800 people in Ireland loved it. Mm -hmm. Or one yeah. guy listened to it over and over and over again every day for several months, which is very weird. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I do pretty good in Canada. <laughs> yeah? People in Canada like you? Must yeah, be that shiny head. Must be. I mean, it's, it's, be. it's a thing. They That's why I'm popular in Canada, too. They can see themselves in my reflection. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I, I still enjoy it. So that's why I'm like, I'm always hesitant or whatever to take a break or whatever, because... I've been doing this show consistently the whole time since I started. I never took a break, never took a hiatus, never skipped a week. I've, I've put out an episode once a week for this whole time. And it's just like, if anything, it's just like to break the routine, it, it would probably kill me. I don't know what the hell would go on if I stopped. Do you, but you don't even have one specific recording day either, is it? It's just like you have a specific release date, but I think you, you record yeah. whenever, right? Eh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, just whenever you got time. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Because there was a point in time before I got busy at work to where I was scheduling like three recordings a week. So that's four weeks, well, three, six, nine, 12 recordings a month. So that's 12 weeks worth of content, you know? 
Nice. nice. So like you, you get all those episodes and you just kind of, you know, just feed them out one week at a time and just like you can just chill out and just go do other shit. I've always felt weird about that. Like, I feel like the interview is almost can get put on a date a little too easily when that happens, you know, where mm-hmm. like it's released two months later. So we're like, you know, something could obviously change and all of a sudden the information's wrong. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I've always had a weird thing about like, how do, how do you do that without like your interview all of a sudden being outdated? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it can also go with the things that you talk about or whatever. I mean, if yeah. you're speaking of current events, I mean, that can kind of date it and whatnot. Or, um, you know, you mentioned in um, things that are about to happen that don't that at, it happened before the release or after the release and shit or yeah. some shit. So, I mean, you got stuff like that. But I mean, that's kind of how I used the Patreon at one point when I did have it, when I would stack up like 10 episodes and I knew they was going to be coming out one week at a time or whatever. So I would like put three in the Patreon feed so you can hear those like right now, right now. And then, you know, the next week I would do another three or whatever. So I was kind of doing it that way. And then, you know, it's like, this is extra work. I said, you can just wait. (laughs) So basically, you were trying to be Netflix, the Netflix of podcasting on Patreon. You're like, you know, you could wait every week for this to come out, or you can binge listen right now. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would definitely take the binge listen first. I think most of the time. Yeah, and that that was another thing that you learn in hindsight or whatever. You start a new podcast or whatever is always good to record at least three to five episodes. And release yeah. them all at once rather than, you know, just drop Give one people a little bit of a catalog first. Yeah. yeah. And then there's other things that I'm trying to do to kind of save on the funds and whatnot. Because, you know, I pay Podbean to host my shit, but I also pay for my website that I can host podcasts from as well. So it's just oh. like I can just cancel my Podbean and host it all from my website. But then I had to daggone change the RSS feed again and then all this other crap or whatever. It's just like, well, I've been here for years. So why I want to change it now? I was like, but I want to save it's, some money yeah. too. <laughs> so it's just Yeah. Like, you, you end up spending more money changing it over to save money that you probably end up breaking even in the end. Yeah, I don't know. So, you know, by the time you change your RSS feed and all that around, it's like you're probably going to spend 100 bucks on it. It's like to save 50 bucks. Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I what? don't know. My what? websites are all like very, very, very basic host provided websites because I have no idea how to build a website. And that's mm-hmm. like, you know, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, oh, what's physics for me, basically. It's basically <laughs> physics. Like, it, it, I, I, you can dumb it down for me, but it's still too complicated. <laughs> Word. Well, Mr. Glenn B. And uh, with your boy B Rob, so you got the B on the back end. I got my B on the front end. Um, it's about that time, homeboy. It's All right, time to shut, shut the door and turn off the lights. Thanks for but having before, me, good sir. But, yeah, but before you go and everything, let everybody yes. know where they can find you on social media and all the things that you got going on. All right. Um, all right. So I am Glenn B, a.k.a. Sticky Dad, because my kid is rude. Uh, but anyway, I have four podcasts. One is a live improv comedy show on Podbean twice a week called the Glenn B Sideshow. And if that is too much for you, I have Fake News with Glenn B, which is parody, po- which is a parody news podcast where I take real headlines. But I don't bother with the article. I'm just going to make it up as I go. So I fake that one. And then, of course, for the toddlers, uh, because as a upcoming parent of a brand new baby, we need bedtime stories without actually having been in the room. So we have story time with Stinky Dad. Uh, what else do I got? Oh, yeah. And if you're into sports and mostly hockey, uh, we got five minutes for mostly a hockey pod. And I am on Twitter and Instagram, Stinky Dad 87 I think I'm good. Word. So, as it is for every guest of the Random Rounds with Rob podcast, the door is always open for you to come back to promote your next big thing or just to shoot the shit. I'll let you in the shit, sir.